They're absolutely out of control. And I can't believe this nation is run by them. What does it say about us and the type of people that the ruling financial elites want in power who they can destroy anytime they want? And are we reaching that point with different power groups getting ready, sick of the Clintons throwing their weight around, blackmailing powerful people? Are we nearing the end of Hillary and Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton looks like he's died. I mean, you know, uh, Larry Nichols has got lung cancer, he's on chemotherapy. He looks pretty healthy. Even though you can tell he's lost a lot of weight, we're about to go to him video Skype. You can watch it at Infowars.com forward slash show. But sitting here looking at Clinton play golf last weekend at Martha's Vineyard, he looks like a reanimated corpse. So do, does the system know that the fall of the Clintons is upon us? Could that great day be actually here? And I'll tell you, I got some self-interest in this. They've tried to kill Larry Nichols. They've killed a bunch of people in Arkansas, including folks that were in the film. Uh, the Clinton Chronicles 1 and 2, a lot of them got beat up, you name it. I'm on their enemies list. I've been messed with by the Clintons, specifically on Waco, and I was getting physically attacked by five guys once in a parking lot. They said, shut up about Waco and the Clintons. I was fired for my first big hit radio job, number one in the city. I was told, stop talking about the Clintons. And I wouldn't. They said, you're fired. And they were told, do not talk about the Clintons. So they... I'm sick of these bullies is what I'm getting at. Larry, I'm ranting. LarryNichols.com. Thank you for joining us for the first time via video Skype. Uh, good to have you. Hope you get better, buddy. We're praying for you. You heard my whole Hi. rant about Hillary. What do you have to say about that? And are we at the point of the fall of the Clintons? Well, first off, you pointed out lung cancer, and that'll sick them on me big time. But we'll leave it at not quite lung cancer, but whatever. They're going to come at me any way they can. And we've been trying to keep it kind of down. But let me tell you something, Alex. These people will get you. You know they will. I don't have to tell you. Good Lord. Sure, sure. I mean, oh. I get what you're saying, though, to be clear. If you already are sick, then they could whack you and claim you just died of that. Exactly. That's right. That gives them a legitimate way for me just to disappear and say, oh, bless his heart. He, you know, you just have to be careful with these guys. If you know what I know, Alex, the list goes on and on. People don't realize it. But let's see, the, the guy, the cameraman for the Clinton Chronicles, did uh 50 some odd people that i worked with that were fixing to testify against hillary in court for whitewater did i mean you're talking about guys that get up on the roof i think it's in kansas city get up on the roof jump off the roof and kills himself which is fine i can live with that the problem is you couldn't get through that door except from the outside how'd he do it so it's loaded with that kind of stuff. Now, I guess more importantly today, what's going on with Hillary? I'm, one of two things is happening, Alex, right now. Either Hillary and her campaign with Bill, they're either getting this stuff out now on purpose. Because one of the rules we have when you run for office, Alex, is you've got to be the underdog. Where she screwed up the last time, running against Obama, she came in as this anointed one that was going to be guaranteed to get it. That's against the system. This time she's doing it right. This time she went out, she cleared the field. You're going to notice there's nobody running against her, except what's his name, the socialist. She drew, she drew down all the money out there, so if somebody does get in, where are they going to get the money? She's playing the system exactly. Now, at this point, I'm going to tell you one of two things is going on, Alex. Either this is the Clintons getting this out so that she becomes, one, the underdog, which she has to do to win, or two, she's got Obama. Remember remember what we said last time, Alex, the best friends we got in this country are Bill and Hillary Clinton right now. Because, as you know, Obama would love nothing better than to have some strikes all the uh, uh, riots all around the country and then he gets to bring in and kick in the FEMA provisional government which we know to be martial law and then he's king well there's only two people powerful enough to stop him and that's Bill and Hillary so I wonder if this new impetus that's being put on these emails is coming from Obama to take them out of the game and I guess there is a third one all of this that we're seeing might be real It'll be the first time we've seen anything having to do with the Clintons or national politics. It's real.
So that's where we stand. But I can assure you this. I don't believe the emails will get Hillary. As I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, I think the emails that they have found that have been top secret are not slated top secret on her server. Now, if that's the case, if they don't say top secret, she's held harmless. Prove anything you want. You're not going to get her. But we've got something that I gave you, which is probably not a favor to you. But we've got a document that I have the original of that will get her and get her bad. And it's going to be broken today. You're going, we're going to put it out, I hope, if you choose to. Yes, we have. Uh, it's the uh, memo on Vince Foster. It is indeed. Now, folks, what that memo says, and I know it's hard to read. The bottom line to that memo, it said the body of Vincent Foster, White House Chief chief counsel was found in his car in the Fort Marcy Park parking lot with a wound to his head. 38 caliber revolver was found in the car with him, along with a six pack of Bartle and James wine coolers of which he had drank one. The others were not open. Then it also says in the back seat, the magic briefcase is there. Now, guys, see that number bottom right down there? What is that? <clears throat> Alex, I can't see from here. That 620. Oh, oh, yes. Six, well, no, I'm sorry. Look at the top of this. Look at the top of it. 2551. There it is. Now, folks, that means this document right here. I placed that in Kenneth Starr's evidentiary file. There it is. That's the official evidentiary stamp. Now, how did this, Alex, go? untalked about. I mean, we're not talking, Alex, about a typo error. Look at that. It speaks with specificity. It, this Foster, they say, the Park Police, and they told the Secret Service at the White House. This is the first notification to the Secret Service that Vince Foster had been found. The story, as we're told, is he walked, got out of his car in that parking lot, walked 200 yards on a dirt trail, went to a berm, sat down by a Civil War cannon, stuck a pistol in his mouth, and shot himself in the head. Now, when you look at the autopsy, it's odd. You know, Alex, that man walked 200 yards on a dirt trail in the hot of July and didn't get a microscopic speck of dust on his shoes, pants, socks, belt, nowhere. The only thing, the only thing they found on him were multicolor long shag carpet fibers. Why is this important? I guess the audience is wondering. This is old news. Vince Foster's dead. Well, no. No. Right there, Alex, you have in your hand the evidence that Hillary's been afraid of. That's why they're afraid of me. And that's why they told the New York Times they're afraid of you. Is this the first time the Secret Service memo has been seen? Yes, sir. I waited and held it out here. The The National Enquirer was going to do a story on it, but I kept holding them down. This is it. This is where it comes, right here. And Alex... How were you I'm able to get this and give this to the special prosecutor from the Clinton impeachment? I stole it. I just stole it. I stole it from the FBI guys that had got it. And I got it before Star did, and I put it in the file. That's the real deal. There's nothing fake about that, folks. You can go to the Now, you're, you're, you're covering for the FBI agents, aren't you? They, you were given this memo. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me take that back because I don't get them in trouble. My mailbox got that. Just one day I woke up and there was a mailbox of mine and that was in it. Along with a whole bunch of other documents. Alex, when we get through, you and I, if you, if you want to, it's your call, of course. This stuff's important because there's no statute limitations on murder. No, dump it all. We've already gotten enough trouble. We might as well sign our John Hancock's big. I, I'm going to dump it all, and I'm going to dump it right here. But I hope y'all forgive me for one little thing. With all the pain the Clintons have called people, caused people, with all the lying and all the hurting and all the people. Now, remember, I'm not saying Bill and Hillary have killed soul. Not them. I'm not saying they've even ordered it. 
But I do know, as do you, Alex, more people died around Bill and Hillary Clinton than any other president in history, in history, even in wartime presidents. And she just announced that she's running. What do you find, Alex? You find their chef back in that day goes Dead. to New Mexico, goes on a hike, and then they find him drowned. Starting all over again. And uh, They're tying up loose ends. Larry Nichols, big-time Clinton insider, uh, the guy behind the Clinton Chronicles, all the big stories, and the guy that they just said last year they're afraid of. Uh, obviously, and we need to pray for him because he is on chemotherapy. You might have forgotten. You did kind of halfway announce it last time you were on, I so I wasn't. I but, but, uh, no, but I understand you don't want to talk about how sick you are, but you look pretty good, so we're praying for you, buddy. But I want to shift gears back to her then. Why does she love to brag about killing people? Uh, I, I mean, you heard me make the whole point about how unseemly that is. Before we go back into Vince Foster, the three points. Trump could be for real. This could all be really happening. The country's fed up. The power structure's sick of the Clintons. Even Bob Woodward's come out and said it looks like, you know, Nixon. Or, and I thought of this too, but never said it on air, this could be Obama getting rid of his political controllers so he can go for the big power grab instead of letting them have their shot. And it could be the camp that backs Obama, and he has been double-crossing with the Islamicists, the, the Saudi Arabians, he clearly has a bigger power play here, uh, like nothing I've ever seen. And so could he be planning something and to not pardon the Clintons? Could he be, uh, be getting ready to set them up? You know, Alex, I've feared this since day one. You know, we are at a point in history with the United States of America. We're in the we, end game, so they're going to start stabbing each other in the back. That's right. And everybody is vying to be the last president, the last president, because then when this country falls, the last president becomes essentially a king. The FEMA provisional government, which you've talked about, Alex, for years. And by the way, Putin's done that. He's the last president in Russia. He is. So what they're doing is we're in a power struggle for the one that's going to be the last president who then therefore becomes king. Virtually the Euro-style 16th century type government. And so, yeah, that's why I think about Obama. Of course I do. He, he knows what I know. He knows Bill and Hillary will move on him, stop him if they can. And I believe he wants it, and I believe Obama is moving to take over this country, be king. And the minute he gets it, Alex, this is conjecture on my part, but I believe the minute he gets that, what's going to happen is he's going to open up and say, I'm really a Muslim, and we are now an Islamic caliphate. Then Let me expand on that. Could yes. Trump be working for Obama to knock out Hillary and to basically get all this prepared and shut up. I think, there's, in my way of looking, there's two things Trump can be doing. Number one, he can be a ringer for Hillary. He is following eerily exactly the pattern they used with Ross Perot. And I've got the state troopers that were Clinton security guards of that day. And they talk and have gone public telling that every day Bill Clinton and Ross Perot talked when they were supposedly running against each other. So he could be setting Hillary up. Or you know what? He could be real. He could be real. And I guess you could look at the third that he might be working for Obama, but I've never heard Trump in anything that I can recall. Maybe you have. I haven't heard anything he said that I can recall that would ingratiate him with Obama. No, I agree with you, except he helped push the whole Kenya birth certificate deal when we actually know mm -hmm. he's the son of Frank Marshall Davis. And that whole story, they wanted us to say he was from Kenya. It's why they said when he was the head of the Harvard Review, law review that he was born there. His wife said it in speeches. They put out a fake birth certificate on purpose. We buy it. Trump pushes the birth certificate. And the truth is he's the son of a famous communist pornographer who he admits he lived with as a kid. I mean, it's just, you see how these intelligence operatives operate. Bottom line, things are shaking up big time. Larry Nichols is going to give you the data dump on what was really in the impeachment of Clinton round one. 
And is this the fall of the Clintons or a power struggle between Obama and the Clintons? Or could Trump be working for Jeb Bush? Who knows? we got to look at every angle. The truth is the words we speak do go on forever as long as humans keep records of it. And that's our connection to the past and the future. Larry Nichols is our guest. Um, that was not a mistake earlier. And, and Larry's agreed that I can talk about it. Uh, and I want to talk about it especially so you can get some real support and try to stay alive longer because he's exhausted his estate. He is battling lung cancer. Same thing killed his dad. He said he knows that can they can kill him in the hospital. They've tried to kill him before. He says every time they come in with the injections, you know, he puckers. Uh, he is, you know what, uh, hoping that it isn't his last because they love to do that. Look, they already have databases. They already know what's wrong with him. It came out last time briefly. Uh, and so I think it's more important than ever we pray for Larry Nichols. And he didn't ask us to do this, but I'm going to do it. Let's put up his P.O. box uh, here on screen whenever we get a chance. And we will uh, give people that P.O. box uh, so that you can donate to him so he can get some good medical care. Uh, he lost his career so much more when he was at the heights of state government working for the Clintons because he wouldn't be part of the narcotics trafficking. So when we do get that P.O. box up on screen, uh, I will give you that address. Uh, so that you can do that. Uh, but it is so important that we stand up and that we support uh, folks that have told the truth, that have taken action. And again, we'll put it on screen for TV viewers uh, later in the broadcast. I can bring Larry Nichols up and he can verbally give us his address uh, on air so that he can get some uh, treatment. Uh, he he does have um, cancer, advanced cancer, and we just want to pray for him and keep him alive as long as possible and good medical care uh, could do that. Larry, uh, I mean, it's out there, so we should get it out there all the way because I agree with you, it's dangerous, obviously, but, but we need to get it out there. What is your P.O. box for folks that want to support you? Uh, I don't have a P.O. box. I've got my address. Number yes. 8 Kensington Drive. Conway, Arkansas, 72034. And because of your program, I had a PayPal thing set up. I don't know much about it, but you can go to PayPal and it's NicholsLive at AOL.com. And Alex, you know, I don't want anybody thinking that what I'm saying is just about money. It's I know you never even asked for it. And then when you were on a few months ago, I said, how are you doing? You said, I'm broke. I got cancer. Yeah. Same way my dad went, uh, and I just want to be able to live long enough to try to see these people go down. And so I said, let's put your home address out or your uh, address so folks can support you. Then I told you you should get a PayPal so you can get you know better donations that way. People can go to LarryNichols.com and link through on there and find your address uh, and more, LarryNichols.com. Now, I want to do the data dump here on the Clintons. That's, that's really important, but I appreciate your courage to talk about this, but... Do, do, do you want to tell folks medically where you're at? No, not really, but I'll say this, folks. Please don't worry. I'll be alive long enough, Alex, to get them. I know they don't want to hear that. But you've got my word, folks. I'm not going anywhere, nowhere, until we stop this madness. And you know, What about I, Bill? How does he look to you? Like you said, death warmed over. I mean, I know I look hollowed out, and I know I look bad, but my God, Bill looks like he's already been dead, and you're exactly right, but we will stay the course. This is coming, and the thing about the documents that we're going to be laying out to you, Alex, this stuff's real. This stuff, they can't get rid of it. We've got this evidence, and like I said, like I said, guys, there's no statute of limitation on murder. And suicide is murder. The reason it got covered up in the first place, folks, so, you know, why would they go to the trouble to move the body, even if he did kill himself? It's because had they not have moved his body, where he died would have fallen under the D.C. police. And they would have surely have gotten to the part that, Hillary and, Bill, Hillary and Vince had a long-standing affair. And had that have come out, then Hillary wouldn't be running for president now. They had to cover it up, and they had to move it into the park police jurisdiction 
which gave them the cover. Sure, the Clintons were about to fall because of all this in 95, and then magically Oklahoma City took place right next door to your state in Oklahoma. And Clinton told on Air Force One, the whole press corps, as you know, one year later that he owed his reelection to Oklahoma City. Uh, you yeah, know, uh, like, while you're talking, let me go let that damn dog out, or you're not going to hear me at all. I'll I understand. Right go ahead and hey, bring the dog on screen. We want to see it. He's an English bulldog, and he's stubborn. He kind of he's kind of like his master, a little bit of a stubborn bulldog. All right, I'll be right. All right, all right. He just unplugged his mic. Um, what a character uh, Larry Nichols is. We are going to send a crew up there to interview Larry Nichols. I, I've been a little short of manpower, but I do want to send. Josh Owens and Jakari Jackson or, or whoever else wants to go up to Arkansas to interview Larry Nichols. That needs to happen sooner rather than later. And, and again, I wasn't throwing him under the bus, folks. He had mentioned the cancer, said it last time he was on. Just And then once it started coming out, I'm like, Larry, you got to go ahead and just say it all. Um, and, and he's like, yeah, but the Clintons will know. I mean, obviously the Clintons already know. They've got, that, that was embarrassing. But I, that yeah, is but, not. It's real radio. It makes it even better. Slash TV. Okay. In the 20 minutes we've got left or 25 minutes, I'll hold you into the next segment. After that, let's get into the data dump. I mean, this is a big deal that that the prosecution of Clinton in the House and Senate, well, that they voted to start the investigation and the trial in the Senate in the House. And then you have the fact that Vince Foster's in the car. They've obviously had the park police and others drag him off. Why were they trying to cover that up? And how could they cover it up? It's so obvious. Well, again, the reason they covered it up was simply to keep the fact that Hillary would be then, if, they, if, they, if they'd have stayed in the D.C. police, there is no doubt the affair between Vince and Hillary would come up as a mitigating circumstance. That would have meant Hillary would have been the first first lady in history to be caught having an affair. Now, today, Alex, that might not have that kind of impact, but it would have been devastating back then. You know, we've dropped so far in our morals that I don't even know what matters now. But I promise you, that would have been devastating then. And so what they're doing is they're trying to keep that under the cover. That's why they're afraid of me. They know what I've got. Let me give another example of what I possess. The autopsy report. The autopsy report. The autopsy report, folks, guarantees you metaphysically that Vince Foster didn't die the way they said he did. When they, when the medical examiner went over and did the autopsy, they found whole meat and potatoes in his stomach. And I don't mean to be gross. That's significant because. It takes three hours approximately, and I don't mean approximately like it could be five hours. I mean, it's three hours, maybe three and a half hours tops. But the body turns whole food into a liquid form, and that's how it's digest digested and sent through the system. So we know from Linda Tripp that she got him a hamburger and french fries, and he took it from her between 12.15 and 12.30. So if you extrapolate, that means he had to have died. His, his life had to have ended before 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. It was 94 to 96 degrees that day in Washington. Now, imagine, and he didn't get found, by the way, folks, until 6.15. 6.15 is the first time. The medical examiners laid eyes on him, and they made two comments that were significant. They said, well, he didn't look dead. They, you know, he didn't look dead. Well, let me tell you, anybody that has seen roadkill on the highway will know. If you lay out in the hot sun for three hours, it's going to be bloat city. It's going to bloat up. The gases are going to build up. They didn't in him. The next thing they said which is really weird. They said they put their hands in his pocket looking for the car keys. Well, as you can imagine, Alex, somebody that's been out there in that hot sun, you, you couldn't, it looked like his britches are painted on him. You're not going to get your hands in his pocket. 
Now, they also, and this is the, this is the first responders, they said there was no blood at the scene. There was just a little trickle coming out his nose that went down on his shirt pocket. Well, Alex, you've been around. I know you have seen head wounds in uh, suicide. It's not a pleasant thing to see. But one thing that happens when you receive a head wound like that, there is a lot of blood. There, were, there was no blood on the ground. They didn't find anything. It looked like he had just fallen asleep. Well, abs I mean, clearly they covered up what really happened to him. Do you believe he committed suicide or was murdered? If he just committed suicide, why cover it up? Well, the reason to cover it up was to keep that from getting out about the affair. That's all it was. You know, when I was with Bill, you know, that was one of the problems we always had. We could take something that looks bad, but if you just leave it alone, Alex, it'll go away. But we always had a problem with Bill forcing it. They were so busy trying to cover stuff up that they'd make it worse. They should have left it alone. The reason they didn't is because a man named Eric Glasscock found out from me, and we found out that uh, Vince Foster and Larry Wallace, an attorney here in Arkansas, big friend of Bill's, and with Vince, they had rented a house from the old Louisiana senator who had retired. He still had the house. They rented that for a cat house for Bill to slip away from the White House and have his parties. Now, that house, if you walked out on the back port and you threw a rock, if you could throw a rock 100 yards, you'd hit the berm where they found him. Straight line. Hit the berm. When I went to visit that house just to check it out, and this was very soon after the death, I get there, and to my chagrin, there's a carpet laying truck there. I go up, and I said, buddy, you're replacing the carpet. He said, yeah, there's a room we've got to replace the carpet in. I said, well, can I see the carpet? He said, well, that's weird. The carpet's already gone. They'd already taken it up. But then he, he led me into the room, and he said, but I tell you what's crazy. Look at this. And in the middle of the room, it looked like somebody bled a hog out. But they had taken the carpet, so I'm going, well, I guess that... So that, he shot himself in the whore pad, and they mm -hmm. had to cover that up because they didn't want an investigation of the, of the right. uh, whorehouse. That's right. They didn't want it by the D.C. police. Remember, that's the key thing. The park police, as you know... Alex, that's you right. Know they're always it. finding the dead interns drug onto the parkland. Yeah. That way and they can cover it up. The park police have been the fixers for politicians for years and years and years. So... I go in, there's the stain in the floor, obviously, and I say to the guy, well, God, I wish there would have been some of that carpet I needed. He said, well, I don't tell you what kind of carpet it was. Now, folks, this is his exact words. Come over here, and he looked at the tacking strip. He said, look, he pulled up a piece of it. He said, it's long, multicolored, shag carpet. Exactly what matches the autopsy. Exactly. But remember, don't worry about that. It's all in the documents that we had. That autopsy report, Alex, is a killer. It's a killer because now you're dealing with science, metaphysics. They can call me a liar. They can call you a liar. They can do whatever. But that's the autopsy report. So when that comes out, we'll break it out of here. And the point to all of this is the American people need to hear the truth about the real Hillary Clinton. Well, Larry, I'm going to say this right now. It is amazing having you via video Skype. Uh, your phone quality is not good. I would like to invite you up later this week uh, to, to, to really go over even more, just bam, bam, bam. When we come back, though, I really want to specifically get in to what else you think they're going to pull, where you think they're going. What does your gut tell you? Is this Obama waging war against the Clintons or is Trump for real? Because if he was a shell for Hillary, saying she's a crook and should step down, that's something that even if he flip-flops later is damaging her. I don't see him making statements like that if he's still under her control. Uh, what do you think? Well, I think there's a chance Trump's real. I hope he's real. But now, Alex, you want me to burst everybody's bubble about Trump? Go ahead. And remember, guys, the reason the Clintons had me around was because I was a pretty good old country strategist when it came to politics. Now, I want all of you to take Donald Trump's numbers, 
take Carla Fiorini's numbers, take Ben Carson's numbers, and take Ron Paul, Rand Paul's numbers. Add those up, and come primary day in the RNC primary, that's what Trump's going to end up with. Now, let's take another candidate, for example, Bob Jen. Stay there. Explain to us the numbers uh, from political strategy. Again, you're one of the admitted brain experts on Clinton's sex successful gubernatorial runs and one of his fixers until it got into narcotics trafficking and you wouldn't be part of it. Larry Nichols is our guest. I can't believe it's deja vu. We're back to battling the Clintons. They just never go away like herpes. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. We're going to find out exactly what political strategist gone, like I said. Larry Nichols who work side by side with other Clinton top strategists who are household names. We're going to find out exactly why he thinks Trump is basically going to burst all our bubbles. And is it what a lot of people look at the polls and say that Rand Paul is a better shot at beating Hillary than Trump and Trump has alienated Democrat voters? We're going to find out in just a moment from Larry Nichols of LarryNichols.com. I want to put on screen if you want to correspond to him or you want to try to send him five, ten dollars, whatever. He's not asking for it, but I know he's broke and battling cancer. Larry Nichols, 58 Kingsington Drive. That's K-E-N-S-I-N-G-T-O-N Drive, Conway, Arkansas, 72034. Or link through to his PayPal, LarryNichols.com. And he could be right there with the Clintons today. I mean, he was their big confidant, but he would not be part of the death of teenagers that saw the drug dealing, the flying the drugs in. He just wouldn't be part of it. Uh, we got a final five minutes coming up. And as usual, you and I are both from the South. We babble a lot. We talk over each other. And we, you know, we, we, we tell stories in detail. What's the other big dirt? that you've got on the Clintons. Obviously, we need to get this out quickly, so we should get you back on the next few days via video Skype. I want to thank you for hooking it up. But briefly, tell us what's coming up in the next final segment. Go ahead and get it out there. What's the other intel you got on the Clintons? Well, the most important thing, of course, is the autopsy. But the other stuff that I've got coming out has to do with uh, Alaskan fisheries. Alaskan fisheries. Now, if you don't think that's important, folks, it got Ron Brown killed. Ron Brown, the Secretary of Commerce. Alex, the, the stuff is there. When Vince Foster died, it was all there the whole time. Kenneth Starr claimed to me that he wasn't going to get into if he wasn't murdered. Hold on, back in 70 seconds. This is Bombshell. I'm going right to you. 70 seconds. Thank you. Larry Nichols. Then we've got the economic breakdown. Visit Coming up with Gerald. All right, Larry Nichols, we got five minutes left. I want to invite you back up on Thursday or Friday if you can do it, sir, to really get into more of this and take phone calls. Clinton Insider joining us. Finish up. You got five minutes. Uh, also, get into Trump. You never had a chance to talk about that, how he can burst our bubble. Go ahead. Well, the Ron Brown is going to be significant. By the way, back to the autopsy of Clinton, I mean, uh, Vince Foster. Folks, you got to realize the doctor that did the autopsy, they brought him out of retirement, Alex. The last, that guy did the autopsy on John F. Kennedy. He was retired. And they brought him out of retirement to conduct the autopsy on Vince Foster, number one. Now, back to Ron Brown. When Ron Brown died, he had come out and say, I had broken a story about Alaskan fisheries where Ron Brown had said Alaskan fishery had come up with this boat that could catch fish and process fish at the same time on the boat. Ron Brown passed an order and said it was illegal to do that, so they had to stop catching fish and processing them on the boat. But when he did that, Alaskan fishery stock plummeted to like, God, 25 cents a share from eight or nine dollars a share. Well, Clinton, longtime friend and supporter, Don Tyson goes in and buys out Alaskan fishery stock, all of it. 30 days after he buys it, Ron Brown changes the ruling and makes it okay now again to, do, to, you know, to process the fish on the same ship that catches them. Now, when that happened, I mean, this is a huge profit for Tyson. Well, I got hold of it and I started pressing on it. Now, the media actually got hold of that 
and started querying Ron Brown. And it looked like we were getting some congressional investigations. And Brown and, said, if uh, I go down, everybody goes down. You got it, Alex. When he said that, I think you and I talked about it. I said, he, he won't be around long or we something. We did. We did. Well, then he goes on a junket into Germany and his plane flies into the side of the mountain. Well, folks, here's where that story gets weird. I had two captains or majors that came to me from the Air Force that actually did the autopsy. They you were the one that released it to the Washington Times, I remember, where yeah. they, they did the, uh, the, the unofficial one, when he the intake, and he had a bullet hole in his head, right? A forty five Bullet? A the exact bullet hole in the top of his head, exact the same, exactly the size of a 45 caliber bullet, which is what the military carried in that day. And then there was a stewardess, which was really a sergeant, Sergeant Kelly. When they got to the crash site, folks, she was sitting on a stump crying. She walked to the helicopter. And as you remember, Alex, when she landed at the base with the helicopter, she's dead on arrival. They showed me the x-ray. And that lady's brain stem had been completely set. Special forces broke her neck. We're out of time. I want to have you back in a couple of days. You can do it to take calls and flesh more of this out. Bombshell, thank you for your courage. Briefly, what's the problem with Trump? He, he doesn't go as well against Hillary in a general election? He doesn't, he doesn't go well at all because what's going to happen in the primary, that's where they'll beat him. But there's stuff we need to talk about about that. What he says when he says he's not going to swear he won't switch to an independent is because of the dirty tricks that he knows the RNC will pull on him and get him kicked out of the race in five or six states, and therefore he can't win. That's what he's saying. If they pull those stunts, he will switch parties. And Alex, by the way, for, we don't have enough time but to tell all the dirty tricks, but there is a company because of the last show I did with you, they're putting out the genies out of the bottle which is simply a book that tells you all of the tricks. And it's listenupaudiobooks.com. They're doing it. I'm not. You need to get that book, and it'll tell you, Alex, play by play what Hillary's doing right now and what she'll do in the future. Well, it's great having you via video, Skype, and I'm going to send the crew up. I'm going to not procrastinate. We're gonna, I'm going to have Rob Dew call you. If it's okay, in about 15 minutes, give you a break. Okay. And I want to send a crew up to just let you dump it all on us, show the documents, everything up there to Arkansas, okay? You bet, Alex. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Larry. And we're praying for you. Everybody, you say a prayer. Larry Nichols, a real patriot exposing evil. We appreciate you, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest on the World Financial.